TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Um, I got no new warning screens, man. I got two separate ones. Um, but anyway, viewer discretion is advised. I do not glorify, sensationalize, or condone any of the acts, stories told. I am here simply to educate myself and others of the history or current state of issues around the world. The following presentation intends for is intended for mature audience. It contains graphic descript descriptions or crime scenes, adult dialogue, and strong language. Viewer discretion is advised. I'm almost positive y'all fast forwarded through that. But let's get into this, man. Um, this is from Swamps. Swamp Stories? Harlem Spartans versus London, the wild beef. Okay. Let's get into it. It's two weeks ago. Huh? I was banned two weeks ago. <laughs> the United Kingdom. This is a country that I never thought I would cover. The region has never been seen really? as tough and has been the world's staple for a proper society. This, of course, is a general outside perception. So many people have no clue about the underworld that exists in the UK. Within every society, there are the haves and the have-nots, the privileged and the underrepresented. And because of this, every city has nice areas and dangerous areas as well. London is no exception. The city is home to some da and dangerous areas. I want to make a point, man. Just because there's homeless people in tents and stuff doesn't mean it's a dangerous area. Now, can we associate it with a dangerous area? Yes. <laughs> but not, not all the time it's not dangerous. Especially in Chicago, there's like homeless tents, p people in tents all around. It's not, they're, they're harmless, some of them areas as well. London is no exception. The city is home to some dangerous streets where residents have to constantly watch their back. And in this episode, you'll be able to see how wild things can get. Welcome to South London, the city's okay, most south. feared area. It's located across the river from the rest of the city. Truly, I like the South. South London, man. South London, East London. I like all of London. I ain't gonna hold you making it its own world. Londoners from across the river rarely come down to the south. This is mostly because of the snobby attitude of the north and west, but it's also because South London has a history of beef. Historically, two neighborhoods have been bitter rivals. This would be Brixton and Peckham. Each of these neighborhoods are huge, like over 70,000 residents apiece. However, they're also extremely dense, so you can easily walk from one to another. This made the rivalry so much worse because members on both sides could easily interact. Well, over the years, the Not like Chicago streets. Brixton Peckham rivalry got so bad that other neighborhoods had to choose a side, one of which was a small neighborhood just 10 10 minutes up the road. This would be Kennington, which has long been known as a better area of South London. However, Kennington does hold RGI housing, which is the equivalent of Section 8 in America. And within these buildings, things can get pretty rough. The Early Beginnings Okay. The story begins in 2011 when Kennington teens began attending Tennyson Academy. Tennyson Academy is where both Brixton and Kennington teens can attend. Well, at this time, Kennington- I ain't even hold you. Swarms. And had this dude is breaking it down. I ain't never, ever in no documentary heard of a high school being brought up. Like, is I where never. both Brixton and Kennington teens can attend. Well, at this time, Kennington had taken sides with Peckham in the beef. And naturally, this made the two neighborhoods bitter rivals. Oh, yeah. Well, given- and High school is where it be starting. Where neighborhoods where, where it'd be one big school that that that, that go with two sides go to and they gotta meet in the middle this is day this is important in that you'd expect the teens to be right would you be interested in collecting five figure paychecks for a few hours of but that's not what happened Thankfully, all of the students were able to overlook the rivalry scene, huh? and become close friends. The tight friendship remained throughout high school, but that's when everything fell apart. 2014. After graduating, some of the teenagers went off to college, but those who chose not to attend decided to hang out in their respective neighborhoods. 
Both Brixton and Kennington had older members making tons of money hustling in the streets. So naturally, the teens fell under their wing, and this meant adopting their beef as well. As a result, the result, the Kennington teens cut off their Brixton friends, and this did not make them happy. So the former best friends became arch rivals just like that. Well, after a while, the Kennington teens wanted their own identity. So they got together and started the Harlem Spartans. Harlem is slang for money, and Spartans represents what? Harlem is slang for money? They do to the streets of South London. And this. I never knew that. This would unfortunately end up being a correct assessment. But first, let me introduce you to the original seven members. First, you have Joshua Eduardo, also known as Blanco. Then you have Lot Juan Griffiths, also known as S.A. Number three is Crosslawn Davis, also known as Biz. Then you have Najee's Max and L.M. Sixth, you have Mukhtar Mac, also known as Miz or Mac. Mac. And finally, Free Mac, man. you have Samsodine Falolu, also known as TG Million. That's the return of the Mac. All oh, seven of the Harlem Spartans came out of the gates as wild as can be. And right off the bat, they had five major rivals. First were their former friends from school. This would be 150, the biggest Spartan rival of them all. They reside in Angeltown, Brixton, and they are a wild group of guys. Next, you have China Walk, who represent the China Walk housing project in Canada. China Walk is a crazy name for a crew. I ain't even gonna lie, that's a W name for a crew. Pennington. Geographically, these are the most immediate rivals to the Harlem Spartans. Then you have 061, a group of guys from the Tabard Gardens 061. Projects. Next would be 410, who hold down Brixton's Myatt's Field. And finally, you have Zone, Zone 2, a fear- All of these are rap groups now. Um, I don't know if- I, I think I just heard somebody rapping from 061 for the first time. I think I just- over on my second channel called Chicago Duke Reacts, uh, but yeah. Weird gang in Peckham. So from the very start, the Harlem Spartans had rivalries all over South London. This made life extremely difficult to maneuver. However, the really Harlem Spartans would everybody. initiate the first incident. And that takes us to Halloween 2014. On this festive day, an 061 member named David Maxwell, also known as Lil D, is hanging out in front of his hood store. That would be Pilgrimage Street, right across from the infamous Tabard Gardens. 2 p.m. A brand new Spartan named Chuds and his friend Ronnie ride out to the Tabard Gardens. On this mission, they're looking for any 061 trying to make a name for themselves. One member they can find. At 2.30, they locate Lil D right outside the store. So Chuds hops off the moped and chases him down. Not too long after, Chuds would be arrested due to surveillance camera. This is a d d bro, whoever's doing this documentary, you got it. You know the ins and outs of YouTube's policies. Look, the way he just did this, instead of describing it. And outside the store. So Chuds hops off the moped and chases him down. Not too long after, Chuds would be arrested due to surveillance cameras. In CCTV. court, he ultimately pled down to 14 years. This was the moment when South London realized that the Harlem Spartans were serious. But aside from the streets, they also pursued another venture. In 2014, the members began recording songs in a local youth studio. Their initial songs saw local success, but nothing more than a few hundred thousand views. However, that would change when- 2014, a few hundred thousand views is a lot. The Harlem Spartans adopted a new member. This would be Jariel O'Connor, also known as Lowski. Originally, Lowski was cool with one- Jariel O'Connor, also known as Lowski. Originally, Lowski was cool with 150. In fact, you can actually see him in Sneeko's music video. Well, something happened with In fact, you can actually see him in Sneeko's music Sneakbo. video. Well, something happened between him and 150, so he left to join their rivals. And the first thing he- That's crazy. That's like Kevin Durant leaving the Warriors. Kevin Durant left OKC to join the Warriors. 
That's, that's what I compare this to. <laughs> Did was get in the booth and record a 150 diss track. In the song, he openly reveals that he was once friends with 150, but is now rocking with the Harlem Spark. Wow. Hey. crazy what I just seen on this ad. I don't even know what I'm watching. He takes a major with 150 but is now rocking with the Harlem Spartans. And then he takes a major shot at them. He says they say 150 but it's really 146. Holy Every time I watch these beef videos, it's like a reminder of the negativity that started it all. Like, I know that that's time. Holy! This is attributed to the four members that they recently lost. Pistol, SQ, Gauze, and Jay Milla. Of course, 150 felt disrespected, especially because Lowski used to be their friend. But also yeah, because nor he or the Harlem Spartans had ever done anything to a 150 member. So in response, 150's rapper Styx would pull up to Harlem's block and post it on social media. Despite this attempt to make the Spartans look weak, their song exploded all over London. It eventually became the official song of the summer. This is because it was the most disrespectful drill song that South London had seen to date. Well, despite the success and fame, Lowski was still knee deep in the streets. Just two months after the release of the song, he would be arrested for possession of a knife. Yes, that's actually a crime in England, and Lowski would get sent to prison for two- Yeah, if you don't know, you can't have one of them. You can't walk around with one of them, period. Two years. Now, without their popular rapper, the rest of the group needed to pick up where he left off. And that's exactly what they did. The rise of the Harlem Spartans. For the rest of 2016, the other rappers blew up more than Lowski ever had. On December 15th, they dropped a hit song called Call Me a Spartan. Then, exactly a month later, they dropped a song called Kennington Where It Started. The breakout song reached 17 million views. It ended up being a UK anthem and even caught the attention of Drake. At this point of stardom, millions of dollars are on the way. Concert tours, autograph signings, sponsorship deals, you name it. However, the Harlem Spark was too involved in the streets, man. This is the, this is the downfall of the UK rapper right here, man. The streets, the calling of the streets just be too, too, too tough. And I get it because I'm from that, you know, you know what I'm saying? But like, y'all had a lot going on, man. Martins may not have realized what they had on their hands. Either that or they were. Y'all just ain't had no big homie. And not to say the big homie is, you know, the, 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 the standard in the USA because it's not, but. Y'all just didn't have no older person around y'all leading y'all down the right path to let y'all know like, hey, this is a means to an end. Let's get on top of it. Now, now of course, now, but if y'all would have jumped on it then. They were too far deep into the streets of South London. And this is why 2017 would be the beginning of their fall from grace. In March of 2017, Harlem rapper Jojo was arrested for robbery and sentenced to seven years. And sadly, he wouldn't be the last one to go down. After Call Me a Spartan, TG Million would become a star. The ladies loved him and the streets feared him. Well, at the same time, the rival 410 started blowing up as well, often dissing the Harlem Spartans. Specifically, a rapper named 410 Blacks and TG Million was not a fan of this. That's because he and 410 Blacks were childhood best friends. And as we know, this can add fuel to the fire. March 6th. You got somebody on the inside or something? 16th, 2017. TG Million drives out to Myatt's Field, where 410 is known to be. There, he spots his rival rapper in the car, so he rolls up right next to his window. The 410 rapper notices him and instantly speeds away. So TG Million chases him through the narrow streets of London. <laughs> That's not funny, man. Uh... R.I.P. to everybody involved. That is not funny. The, the, the animation is funny to me. Paces him through the narrow streets of London. <laughs> Anytime you have a dramatization of anything that's going on, in any type of video, but if you have a dramatization, dra is that how you say it? Dramatization? Your video is going to be wildly successful. <laughs> 
I enjoy dramatization videos the most where they got like little scenes like Billy Yon chases him through the narrow streets of London. The 410 rapper crashes, so TG Million walks up to his window. Bam. Thankfully, the rapper Black survived, but TG Million would go down after overwhelming evidence. See how he never uses the words that, you know, that the, the words that really describe it. He just uses the sound or puts it over the screen. It's tough. This Black survived, but TG Million would go down after overwhelming evidence. This was the most bold decision that the local residents had ever seen. And because of this, TG Million received 12 years. This was the third ah. Harlem Spartans rapper to go down in under a year. And at this point, only three of their popular rappers were left. Biz, Blanco, and Ms. Or Mac. This trio actually did a great job. Y'all know what's where Ms. Or Mac is. Robin was loved by the I fans. I don't know where the other ones is. Ms. Or Mac was even crowned as the Beyonce of the group. On top of this, Biz and Blanco had their own unique style. They released a song called Kent that reached 4 million views. Then on April 30th, 2017, the trio released their biggest song to date. This would no be a hook. song called No Hook, which reached 8 million views. However, the fans noticed something strange. Blanco and Ms. Or Mac are not in the video. What they later found out is that they both had been arrested in Brixton. Apparently, they took a cab ride to their ops block with a samurai sword and two blowers. While circling the area, the cab was pulled over and the two sp Hulu. Of course, my boy said they took a cab. Taking a cab. Spartans. They used to do that in Chicago, take Ubers to do, you know, blah, 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 blah. But taking a, t a, ca a cab is wild. Like a <laughs> taxi. That's wild. <laughs> and you know they on to you. Who pulls over a taxi? ...were searched. As a result, they both received six years in prison. This now meant that five Spartan rappers are locked up, which ultimately meant that only two rappers were left, Biz and S.A. The two continued to make music, but it was nothing compared to what the Harlem Spartans used to be. And on top of this, their main focus remained on the streets of South London. And that takes us to the wildest incident of them all. July 25th... All right, let's see how he... Let's see how this guy... Uh puts this in cold words. 2018, Harlem rapper S.A. wants to go on a mission against his 150 rivals in Brixton. So being that most of his friends are locked up, he contacts the Harlem Spartans' closest allies. This would be Moscow 17. This is a feared group of guys located in Brandon Estate. Allegedly the first person that S.A. Are they still cool, Moscow and, and, and Harlem? Yeah, right? They still good, right? Say contacts is the rapper Incognito, but he declines. However, a young Moscow member agrees and pulls up to meet S.A. So the Moscow member drives a moped with S.A. on the back. They arrive in Angeltown, Brixton, and the search is on. After 10 minutes of driving around, they find 150 rapper Jay Band sitting in his car. So they ride up to his window and S.A. pulls out his blower. It jams, so Jay Bands hops out of his car to defend him. Yeah, the rusty ting on him. <laughs> Boy, definitely, Jim. You know, the makeshift, uh, the makeshift, makeshift crocodile teeth in there. Them homemade crocodile teeth. It's tough. Himself. The Moscow driver pulls off when he notices that S.A. is injured. But instead of taking him to a hospital, he sadly dumps him off on the road. S.A. screams. And they ain't never let that go since. Them boys rapped about that for you. Steal for help and some passersby come to check on him. They call an ambulance, but sadly it's too late. R.I.P. S.A. was just 18 years old and truly a star in the making. The Harlem Spartans were upset with the Moscow driver's selfish decision. And directly after the incident, something strange would happen. Moscow 17 rapper Incognito was found deceased in his neighborhood. To this day, no one knows who did it or why it happened. It could have been the Harlem Spartans 150 or anyone else. Either way, South London was getting way out of control. Nothing like this had ever happened before, at least not to this extent. Wait, so the rest of is Harlem Spartans in Moscow cool? Did they just sweep this one under the rug because they don't know who did what? 
2018 was really bad in South London. This question. is partly because the Harlem Spartans kept sliding on 150. This resulted in four members receiving over 10 years in prison. It's safe to say that the police were all over the Spartans, monitoring their every move. The Harlem Spartans' demise is incomprehensible. So many members- Like, the UK is so- I don't take this what I like. No, I'll take it how you want. But the UK is so small, a small one, and then it's not really crime field. So when crime happens, they can focus all, the police can focus all their energy and all of their resources on that, on that, that situation. So you, you, it's real hard to move out there. It's real hard to move negatively. Members gone in such a short period of time. So at this point, all they had is Biz and Loski getting out soon. For the longest time, Biz was able to stay out of trouble, but a very strange occurrence would put this to the test. The random diss. In December of 2019, a group of guys from all the way across South London began dissing SA. The guys are from the district of Lewisham and call themselves the Catch Pages. Well, of course, Biz wanted from the district of Lewisham and call themselves the Catch Pages. Catch pagans, my boy. Catch pagans. Catch ops is what that means. If y'all watching this and y'all don't know, pagans is their word. Well, if pagans is the UK's word for ops. Of course, Biz wanted to figure out why they dissed his late friend. December 6, 2019. Biz messages the two dissers on social media. These would be Jediah Param and Elijah Morgan. Well, in the messages, they agreed media. These would be Jediah Param and Elijah Morgan. Well, in the messages, they agree to meet up at Deptford Creek. This is a neutral area where both sides can feel comfortable. 3 p.m. Biz drives out to Deptford Creek. A few minutes later, the Catch Pagans arrive in a taxi cab. When they arrive, Biz allegedly tries to attack them, but- Bro, Why are you coming in a taxi? Get a car. Like, you, you gotta get out that taxi and be sitting- Once you get out that taxi, you lacking, for sure. You have no way to get up out of that situation. Drops his weapon. So the catch pagans jump out of the cab and pounce on him relentlessly. Biz tries to get away, but his attempt is unsuccessful. Another Harlem Spartan gone. Biz was ultra talented just like the rest, which makes it even more sad. Well, thankfully, the entire incident was recorded on surveillance cameras. Both of the men pleaded non-guilty, claiming self-defense. However, their actions were deemed as excessive and they both were charged in the first degree. Each member got a life sentence, even though the courts proved that- That's crazy. In America, they definitely would've got off of self-defense. Or, or got it down the my manslaughter or something. That's Biz tough. was the initial aggressor. That's because in England, they don't have the same rights as we do in America. That's true. Do you guys think that this is fair? Let me know in the comments. So here we are at the start of 2020, and let me list off all of the members and what happened to them. First, Lowski missed three crucial years in the Harlem Spartans' growth. Then, Chuds got sentenced to 14 years for the passing of Lil D. Then, Harlem rapper Jojo got seven years for robbery. Then, Mizor Mac and Blanco went down for possession of arms in a taxi cab. They both got six years. Got out and then, went back for pointing that thing at a cop. TG Million got 12 years for sliding on 410. After this, SA passes away on the moped. And finally, Biz passes away at the hands of the Catch Pagans. So who was left? Lowski was released in 2019, but this was to a whole new Kennington. All of his friends were gone, and the Harlem Spartans' music buzz was completely done. And unfortunately, shortly after his release, Lowski would be arrested again. So in conclusion, they got a couple people out there now though that make good music. They got a couple. And you would assume that the Harlem Spartans are done. And musically, you would be correct. All of the talented rappers are gone. But in South London, that's cat. Dang, that's rough. <laughs> that's the Spartans, rough, they got, they, they still got like two or three rappers that's out here are as active as they ever were. In fact, since September of 2021, the Harlem Spartans and 150 have been going back and forth. All I have to say is, wow, this story was insane. So to all my fellow Americans, London may not be Detroit or Chicago, but if you think it's sweet, 
my fellow Americans. London may not be Detroit or... The crib, it look good, don't it? A little downtown view. Look nice. Look nice. This is the north side. This is where I resided over here somewhere. Because this is the Sears Tower. This is the John Hancock. So this is pointing north. Yeah, I was over here. Chicago, but if you think it's sweet, you are so so wrong. Overall, it's sad to see incidents like this escalate, especially given that London was never this bad. On the bright side, the police seem to do a great job of investigating and putting people away. The Har Harlem Spartans are truly a case of what could have been. And Honestly, he should do some more, man. I like how he does these documentaries, man. They're very uh creative in how he delivers the message. Got some stuff wrong, but you know. Incredible talent. What it is, man. See, I love leave a like, comment, subscribe. I'm gone.